Hello and welcome to Art History Around the World with me, Maura Brook. Today we will be learning about art of the Southwest. Last week we learned about Impressionism, but while that style was taking the European art world by storm, the American art scene was very different. As Americans began traveling west in the mid-1800s for the gold rush or just to settle in the land with new opportunities, they began capturing the beauty of the new lands they were settling. Later in the mid-1900s, an event called the Dust Bowl occurred, where giant dust storms decimated farmlands, forcing people to move to the cities. Many of these individuals moved to the West, bringing along with them unique perspectives that artistic souls turned into paintings and sculptures. Native communities, which had been established in these lands for hundreds of years, were able to showcase their artwork to a new population, and even though there were significant social clashes, the indigenous artistic style became an iconic feature of the Southwest. Paintings of the Southwest became popular subjects in and outside the region, with its brilliantly colored sunsets, towering cacti, and unique succulent plants that most people had never seen before, the Southwest became a subject of intrigue for the entire nation. Let's dive into the world of Southwest art. So what are some characteristics of Southwestern art? Southwest art showcases the natural landscapes, local culture, and native peoples of the region. The Southwest region consists of Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and our home, Arizona. In Southwestern paintings, we see cacti, mountains, and a variety of native plants and animals. You will also see the contrasting hot and cold colors bouncing off different elements in the paintings. While we do see nature featured in a lot of Southwestern paintings, there are many works that depict indigenous peoples as well. Southwestern architecture isn't included as much as animals or cacti, yet sometimes we see traditionally Southwestern buildings, usually homes, featured in paintings. Southwestern art tends to have a tranquil mood as the desert has a reputation for being a quiet, calm, remote place. Now let's look at some famous artists of the Southwest. First, let's travel back in time a hundred years to the lifetime of Maynard Dixon. He lived from 1875 to 1946 and painted many of his iconic paintings in the 1920s. He was one of the premier artists of the American West and was a true pioneer with an independent view and unique modern aesthetic of the American West. He loved showcasing the raw beauty and remoteness of the Western landscape as well as its diverse nature. Now let's look at the art of Gerald Cassidy, who lived from 1869 to 1934. He was born in Kentucky, but later moved to New Mexico. There he met the director of the Museum of New Mexico, who hired him to create paintings depicting the culture of the region. In his art, you will see native peoples, mostly from the Navajo Nation. Cassidy was able to travel to Europe with his art, which was very well received by the European public, something that was unique for American artists at the time. We couldn't possibly explore Southwestern art without looking at the works of indigenous artists. Here we see paintings by Navajo artist Leland Holliday. He is a modern artist who uses influences from his own culture, as well as from artistic styles from around the world, such as Impressionism and classical art. As a young boy, he saw his uncle create paintings, and he became inspired to do the same in his own unique style. We are lucky to have many local options where we can find authentic, real Southwestern art made by local and indigenous artists. You can go to the galleries at Old Town Scottsdale, the Heard Museum, the Phoenix Art Museum, the Spirit of the West Museum, Prescott Art Festival, and other art festivals around Arizona. We have the unique opportunity of being able to compare Southwestern paintings with the real deal Whereas most of the country can only experience an Arizona sunset in a painting, we're able to view real Arizona sunsets every single night. As it gets hotter, it's easy to complain about living in the desert, but we must also appreciate that we live 
in a beautiful masterpiece crafted by the ultimate artist. This has been Art History Around the World with me, Maura Brooke. I wish each and every one of you a beautiful Shabbos, and I look forward to learning with you again next week. Bye!